very strange thing driving in the fog. The world seems so unfamiliar. Everything that you would regularly encounter on a boring drive is suddenly strange and new. When you can't see any further than 20 feet, things come on you that you, when you weren't expecting, and short distances can seem uncannily long, and long distances strangely short. Occasionally, there are breaks in the fog, and, once, and you once again can see enough to be able to see where you are in the progress, but then you plunge back in it again and lose yourself all over again. Such is the experience of fog. In fact, this morning, I had almost passed a car. I was driving up on him, and I saw that familiar black with white lettering, and I saw him, I'm like, Denton, weird, that's, oh, that's a policeman, I should probably slow down. It's always bad form to pass a police officer, even if he's in Denton. Uh, and so, but had he not been driving there, I would have noticed where I was on the road when I passed a sign that said, welcome to Oklahoma. Then I would have had to turn back around and uh, come in. I looked up and said, oh, hey, that's my turn. He allowed me to slow down enough that I could again take bearings of my, take my bearings and see where I was and follow him as he pulled into Starbucks or whatever he did. It, it was early. It's appropriate that there is this dense fog this morning because the intro, the intro of our mass today picks up on this theme. While all things were in quiet silence and night was in the midst of her swift course, swift course your almighty word, O Lord, leap down from, the, from heaven onto your royal throne, uh, out of your royal throne. Then the psalm completes the thought. The Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. And to the quiet silence of an unsuspecting world, Jesus entered, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He put on what would become his glorious apparel, the flesh of humanity, and then set about the task of our redemption. John picks up on picks up the narrative of what we began yesterday and introduces John the Baptist, who in the fog of the morning of our redemption, many wondered whether he was the promised Christ. From the perspective of, of the people, he was the light shining in the darkness. But as we approach and things become clearer, we learn that he is not the light. He merely shines with the light of the true light source. John is a herald of the light, the bird song of the twilight that lets us know that the dawn is about to break. This morning, the readings we have are all about things that come before, that seem like they could be the real thing, but when morning comes and the fog clears, we learn that they merely point to the real thing. The law of the Old Testament pointed toward the new life of Christ. They required a very disciplined life. Of, uh, they, they required a very disciplined life that sets one apart from the world around. Washings and offerings and cleanliness and uncleanliness, do's and don't, they are, that are miles away from the world around. They are designed to set the people of Israel apart from the rest of the world and to mark them as God's own people. But eventually, they become burdensome to the people. A taskmaster is only a good at affecting the behavior of the people, not for changing their heart such that they actually accept the actions on their own. But when Jesus came, they became obsolete as a way of redemption. While the law could wash away one's uncleanliness, it could not wash away the underlying sin. So in the light of the sacrifice of Christ, which dealt with the uncleanliness and the sinfulness, merely washing away uncleanliness becomes obsolete. 
So long as the law was only was the only thing in the world, it led the way sufficiently to allow those under it to see something of God in the world as a candle would on a dark night. But when the true light comes into the world, and all the lights of the room are then able to be turned on, a candle becomes obsolete. To refuse to see in the light of the room by insisting only to use a candle demonstrates how much the candle enslaves the user. With the full light of the room on and burning brightly, the candle user looks foolish and outdated. Though it was indeed a valid tool at one time in the right circumstances, and in the right circumstances it can be the right tool for the job, but once the light is switched on, candles need to be extinguished and put back in the drawer. A fun little experiment I learned about uh, the other day. When uh, miming talking on the phone, I don't think about it. I always answer the phone, hello. Pinky and thumb extended. This imitates the shape of the phone that I talked on growing up. A little cradle and put it on just like that. But since the advent of the smartphone, the imitation of talking on the phone has gone from this to this. Exactly, Kate did it exactly, to this. Smartphones have changed the way we mime how to talk on the phone. Why would people mime talking on, the on a phone that they no longer use? Exactly, but if you think about it, the previous technology would be ring, ring, hello. To use that would be, oh my gosh, they're so antiquated. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that anyone would ever talk on a phone like that. How would you do that? This is how you talk on the phone. This is how you talk on the phone now. It's just the world sometimes presents something and then we are left in the world still doing such a thing and it only dates us maybe even antiquates us at a point, especially if you're talking on the phone like this, when everyone's talking like this. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he is imploring them to walk in the new light of Christ. He is shedding light on the absurdity of the situation in Galatia. There were very much, the, the people there were very much dedicated to following Christ and knew him to be the way, the truth, and the life. They were content with living the new life of Christ while Paul was present with them. But Paul is never in one place long. He had to get back on the task uh, that Christ set for him, and he had to leave. And they knew how to behave as pagans, but he had convinced them that their pagan life was no longer a valid way of expressing their new life in Christ. They did not yet know how to live in the new light of Christ. They were terrified. And so when he left, they were floundering around trying to figure out how to live, live the, the new life. But then they were, they were troubled. And in come the Judaizers, the, the Christians who were convinced that in order to be a true Christian, one had first to be a true Jew. So you had to, one built on the other, so you had to practice, in addition to Christianity, the 613 laws of the Jewish uh, ritual. So, if you need to know how to live a, a new life, from diff, a, a life different from your pagan life, 613 laws tell you exactly how to live your life. But... They knew not what they were being asked to do. Paul, as a former Jew, knew what the law entailed and also what the reversion to the law as, to the, as an essential part of Christianity, of the Christian faith, means for Christians. For the Judaizers, the Judaizers were not coming in and helping them with previous guidelines, but telling them that in order to be a true Christian, one had first to be a true Jew. And the marks of Judaism were circumcision and, and adherence to the law. 
And this is when Paul writes his letter to them to inform them of exactly what this means theologically when they adhere to something like these 613 laws as essential. For Paul, it's fine if you want to do them, but to make them essential to the Christian faith is to work backwards. What they are essential, and they, he says they're intentionally taking up candles while the lights are on because the Jews knew how to navigate the room when the candles were the only light, so they were working backwards. He says, the way is now not to work with candles, but to learn to navigate the room with full light. In the light of the candle, the Israelites were the people of God. But when the light of the room overshadows the candle, that way of navigation shows itself to be sort of work, a sort of works righteousness. And to boot, it is one that cannot even get one to heaven, since it has the things the wrong way around. Rather than behaving in a, than behaving in a certain way in order to, God, uh, to gain God's grace, now in Christianity, God's grace has already been given. And as a, as a result, one's life is changed naturally. This is what Paul is articulating to the Gentiles. Why behave as a child who was under a teacher when one has now entered adult life and now no longer requires the teacher in order to utilize the things learned? Why live as though in a fog when the sun has come out and burned the fog away? One way of life is appropriate under certain circumstances. But when those circumstances are no longer present, to live as those they are is silly. This, as opposed to this, or walking around with a candle, looking around, put it, looking for somewhere to place a candle on a, on a high place so you can see the room when the light's on. It just looks silly. Today we celebrate the fact that Christ has come into the world. We relish in the natural quietness of this time when most of the world takes a break too. Because the new year comes on Saturday. Hello. <laughs> the whole, so we take a break and embrace it. Why work when the world is about to take another break again on Saturday? So there's this natural cause. There's this natural cause for slowing down at, uh, during this week. But when the fog of the quietness burns away, it's time to get back to work. As I said on Christmas Eve, the world has gotten pretty good at behaving in a very pagan way, though it may make all the blusterings of still being Christian. We have a task before us of helping the world to wake from its dream and to shake off the sleep that it may regain its right mind again. Christ came into the flesh of man to redeem man, and in so doing put on glorious apparel. It is time to restore its glory by calling the world to repent and be baptized, that they too may put on glorious apparel. God came into the world to redeem us by bringing light to a world darkened by sin. It is time to walk over and to turn on the light so that we can all see what life is like in the new life of Christ. Not as some facsimile of it, but actually in the new life of Christ, where sin is forgiven and lives are changed because of it. Fog may be interesting and may change our perception of things, but it cannot hold a candle to the reality of the world once the fog is clear. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.